About a week ago, a viewer going by the name Titanium Sandwedge left a comment on my Ectochrome video. In a rambling, condescending, and somewhat bizarre post, he compared the new film revival to the reintroduction of carburetors to modern vehicles. You millennials will learn, he told me, that film has many hassles with nary any benefits. These comments always bother me for a number of reasons. Does he not understand that I've shot film and therefore fully grasp the hassles? Can he possibly not realize that I own a full-frame digital camera and am completely aware of its benefits? What does he imagine I shoot my videos on? An iPhone? Super 8? VHS? But as weak as his carburetor analogy was, he did raise an interesting question. What does film bring to the table? I've spent most of my photography career shooting digital and can honestly say that it's an objectively easier and more efficient way to take photos. Titanium sand wedges hassles are real. I would never expect a sports photographer or photojournalist to shoot film in 2017. The trade-offs are just too severe. And yet almost everything I shoot today is on film. Why? We hear the same answers every time. It makes you slow down. It forces you to get it right the first time. But surely there has to be more to it than that. What exactly is the appeal of film? My first real camera was a cheap plastic Canon that my parents bought for me for Christmas in 1994. Everything was automated and the photos that I took with it were hardly fine art. In a world without Instagram, Snapchat, or cell phone cameras, I used it to take pictures of friends, family, vacations. There wasn't much to it, but I enjoyed it. It wasn't until my mid-twenties that I invested in photography a little bit more heavily. I was going to school for writing and wanted to create a short film. I'd written a script about an alcoholic womanizer, just the sort of story a 25-year-old writing major might write, and thought that the accessibility of modern DSLRs might make it possible. Without knowing anything about photography, I bought a Canon T2i in the 50mm 1.8 lens, set the camera to manual mode, and tried to figure it out. The film never got made, a tragedy, I know. But somewhere along the line, I fell in love with shooting stills. I eventually started doing portraits, then weddings, and by the time I upgraded to a full-frame Canon, I was fully invested in digital. Film wasn't even a thought in my mind. Then I took a photography class. I remember how annoyed I was initially when I learned that we weren't going to be using digital cameras. I borrowed my mother's old Minolta X370, bought some Tri-X, and gave it a shot. And somewhere there, in the darkroom, I fell in love. This is where things get a little bit difficult to quantify. Did I like the process, the difficulty, the distinct look of black and white film? It's really hard to say, but I do know that I loved bringing that physical piece of film through the entire journey, from the store to the final print. It was real, and it was tangible, and I loved it. The film versus digital war, insofar as it ever existed at all, is over. Digital has won, and that's okay. For your average camera owner, the work that goes into the film process is absolutely not worth the final result, and I understand that. I'm good with it. I'd never suggest a photojournalist covering a war zone or a photographer at the Super Bowl switch back to film. That would be absurd. Photographers can argue the effect of megapixels of 8x10 film versus phase 1 backs until the eventual heat death of the universe, and it doesn't affect me. I don't care. That's not why I shoot film. They say photography is both an art and a science, but to me the science has always been secondary. The point, if I can maybe work my way back to it, is that the creation of art is a subjective experience. This is not to say that digital photography is not art. Far from it. Digital is every bit as capable of creating beautiful images, if not more capable. What I'm trying to say, I think, is that film appeals to those of us who see the journey as being every bit as valuable as the destination. There's something exciting about the demands film makes and something comforting about its physicality in an increasingly digital landscape. I've taken photographs with digital cameras that I think are superior to most of my film work, and that is, to me, almost irrelevant at this point. Without being an elitist dick, I think I can pretty clearly imagine Titanium Sandwedge's photos, and digital is probably great for him. I'm glad he's happy, taking daylight photos of golf buddies and grandkids, even as he wags his finger at those silly millennials. In his post, he compares shooting film to the reintroduction of carburetors to modern vehicles. It's an analogy that immediately collapses under even the slightest examination, so let's try this one instead. It's 2017, and people still buy vinyl. People still paint landscapes. People still listen to symphonies. The human experience is infinitely complex and varied, and to reduce it all to efficiency does us all a great disservice. As always, guys, thank you for watching. What's going on, guys? So, obviously something a little bit different today. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Uh, also, 
You know, why do you shoot film? What's your rationale? What's kind of, what's the motive behind this kind of growing film revival that we see happening? If you're new to the channel, there should be some windows popping up around me. Please uh, feel free to click through and, and check it out and see if there's something that you like here. And if you like the video, as always, you know, subscribe, thumb it up, you know how it goes. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in about a week.